Hello everyone, this is Bob Brown here with Community Coronavirus Update number 49, the second one this week because we're in a crisis mode here. So the theme today is a state call to action to prevent rationing health care by December and thousands of deaths. Uh, and here's a, you know, a quote from uh, Dr. Lawler uh, just a couple days ago, in three weeks' times our hospitals will be overwhelmed and we're not going to be able to provide even basic care for heart attacks and strokes potentially in the, in the coming weeks if we do not act quickly. So how bad is it? Um, so the numbers keep getting worse. Uh, Lincoln, Lancaster County, we're, we're doing better because we have our mask ordinance that, that's at least partially enforced. We're about 70 per 100,000. Omaha is already up to 96 per 100,000. Outstate Nebraska is up to 120 per 100,000, uh, which is in very much crisis modes. Uh, you get even farther west out in the panhandle, it's 196 per 100,000, which is uh, probably one of the worst areas in the country right now. Uh, this is a crisis, people. Um, the problem all coming now is that uh, pretty much the whole middle of the country is full. Um, and basically the problem now is that if you are, need to be in a hospital and this hospital is overwhelmed, there's no, there going to be no place to send you. Um, so essentially we can't go north. South Dakota has been full for weeks now. Wyoming's filling up. Colorado is going to fill up. Uh, so our, and our medical centers uh, both have told me, I've talked to folks both here in Lincoln and Omaha, uh, Lincoln is, is, is at capacity and two thirds of our, our COVID patients are coming from outside of Lincoln. So we're going to be at a point where we aren't going to be able to take those patient patients potentially from Columbus or Pawnee City. Uh, Omaha is at, seven, is at capacity and 75% are outside of, coming from outside of Omaha. So they're going to hit capacity and they're not going to be able to take people from Western Iowa and, nor and Northeast Nebraska, for example. Uh, and so we're going to hit a crisis mode. Uh, and so it's the reason I'm recording a second one is we need to do something. We need something something with day, within days, not within weeks. Uh, how bad is it? Well, uh, you know, th as I've said uh, the last uh, month basically is that you can predict hospitalizations three weeks in advance. You know that the peak of hospitalizations comes three weeks after the infections. And so I've been putting these out here. Uh, we just hit 885 hospitalizations uh, yesterday. Uh, projecting forward based on the, this type of projection, we're going to be over 2,000 in three weeks, uh, potentially be in 3,000 by mid mid December. Uh, and so, if we're already at full at 8, 8, 885, imagine how bad it's going to get when you're now up to 2,000 headed toward 3,000. How good is this projection? Well, Three weeks ago, I was I was saying, well, this could be bad. We could be hitting at 700, 800 uh, hospitalizations in three weeks. Well. It was actually even worse than that. It was 885. So if, if anything, 2,000 is probably an underestimate. Uh, so it's going to be two to 3,000 hospitalizations by December if we don't start doing something. Um, so basically what you're seeing nationally, and it's not just Nebraska problem, it's the entire middle of the country. We're going to run out of health care workers. It's not beds and ventilators that are a limiting factor. It's good ICU nurses. And we run out of good ICU nurses. Uh, the mortality starts going up. But we're also going to get a point, it's not just coronavirus that hospitals have to take care of. They have to take care of heart attacks, people deliver babies, people have strokes, people need cancer treatments, um, people, you know, kids wreck their bikes and need, need an arm uh, reset. We're going to get to the point where we have to start rationing health care in the coming weeks. This is where we're headed. Uh, in Utah, uh, a week ago, the hospital uh, run, people ran hospitals in, in Utah, talked to the governor, and the governor listened. They pointed out, look, if you don't do something, well, then we want you to sign off on our, our, on our uh, rationing plan uh, to not take care of people. Do you really want to go there? Uh, thankfully, uh, both the governor, uh, Herbert, and the lieutenant governor, uh, Spencer Cox, who's the governor-elect, listened to reason, and they put in places, they quickly said, whoa, we need to do something. They put, a, they, they put in a mask ordinance with fines. Uh, they put in an order to limit any social gatherings to people in the state's households and to place a hold in all school or extra, extracurricular activities. So they are acting. The question is, will Nebraska act? Um, unfortunately, we still have things like this going on. So when I say a partially enforced mass ordinance, it's because we still have things like this, but thankfully they are enforcing it. Uh, Royal Gove, Grove has lost his permit. They should be ashamed of themselves hosting a super spreader in the event in the midst of a pandemic when you know your hospitals are full and the healthcare workers are crying for help. This is shameful. Uh, the most frustrating thing to me is we can stop this and we literally know how to stop this. It's being stopped all around the world. So Israel kind of had a problem like us, you know, they, they kind of got under control initially, then they let it smolder. It got under control, but then they finally did put the ordinances in place that we were suggesting. And within weeks, they are back under control. So this is very doable and it does not take months. It literally is a matter of weeks. 
Uh, I've mentioned Israel or Ireland a couple times. Same thing with Ireland. You know, they 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 had an initial wave, got under control, did a great job all summer long. Uh, people came back to school for the fall. Things started going up, but they put the ordinances in place. Yes, they closed the pubs in Ireland for a while and restaurants and limited to gatherings, just like everybody's suggesting. And here you are, three weeks later, back under control. So we're not talking months here. We're literally talking weeks if we had an organized plan to do this. So what does that look like? So how do we stop this? Phase one, you need an enforced indoor mask ordinance. It just doesn't work unless, unless you get another 15 to 20% of the population wearing masks. As long as there's a significant portion of the population not wearing masks, it will spread. You cannot stop it. And what we're finding over and over again, except in places like Japan where people tend to follow directions, uh, Americans just don't do that well. Uh, that's why we have to have laws against drunk driving because if we can't just ask nicely, that doesn't work. You're gonna to have to put a fine in place. Uh, and until rates are down to five to 10 per 100,000 where the, the level that contact tracing uh, would work, you need a temporary halt on indoor dining, bars, coffee, shops, gyms, churches. We just have to stop it. I'm sorry, folks. Uh, our goal in public health was to not need this, but unfortunately, we the, the lack of any organized plan is what created the, the situation where this needs to happen. We need a temporary halt on all indoor extra activities where masks and six foot distancing aren't practical. Yes, no basketball, folks. Uh, we need a temporary ban on indoor gatherings of more than 10 people because the last thing we need is more super spread events like the Royal Gove. Phase two, once you get past the rates down below five per 100,000, you can start opening up the dining bars, coffee shops, gyms, and churches at a reduced capacity and ease into it correctly this time. Um, and then we need a VOD available and rapid testing. Thankfully, the one good piece of news is our turnaround time is getting to the point where we can get rapid testing and do good contact tracing. If we got the rates down this low, our contact tracers could then take care of the rest and we could start resuming pretty much normal activities again. Um, once you hit this, there's an eight-week plan. Alicons put this together. Uh, they have plans to put this in place at any and when anybody's ready to go essentially. Ollie's an internationally recognized expert. He's done this before. I still, it's maddening to me that our state is not paying any attention to our experts at the College of Public Health. Uh, we can do this. Uh, Dr. Con uh, Lawler today was quoted in our own paper. Um, you know, our health system is in the danger of overwhelming and being collapsed in a few weeks. And again, he's saying basically a lot of the same things. Ban all the gatherings of, in of 10 people, uh, mask ordinances that are enforced, lower numbers of kids in schools. We're going to have to get here and we're going to have to do it quickly. Uh, this could actually be us by Christmas. If we were to get this in place, we could do this. Australia has eliminated almost all spread in the entire country by doing this kind of thing. It's not, and it's not just Australia, it's New Zealand, it's Norway, uh, it's Japan. So this works. We actually literally know how to do it. All we need is leadership. Uh, unfortunately, that's not what we're seeing. So uh, the, the doctors and experts at College of Public Health and UNMC, infectious disease experts are all on the same page with this. And the only response back from Ricketts' uh, spokesman is to attack them. Uh, that is not what we need right now. Um, and Taylor Gage, I'm sorry, but you need you, you say your uh, actions are based on data and sound science. Where is it? Please show it to us. You keep telling us you're, you're listening to ex experts. All of us experts know each other. Who are you talking to? We can't figure out where this is coming from. Uh, this is not just political, this is science. If you have a, another approach that will work, show us your evidence. Uh, is this political? Well, it shouldn't be. This is just literally it's science. We know how to do it. Uh, and frankly, if you're not going to lead from the state, at least let us do it locally. Uh, uh, local control is a time-honored uh, tradition, a conservative principle in Nebraska. So if you're not going to do any leadership, at least, at least leave us alone so we can do this leadership. Don't try to re uh, rescind the orders that the local folks are trying to create. They know their communities better than you do. Uh, so the school decision. Uh, to me, we need to do this because we need to do our best to keep the schools open. The schools, uh, there are so many bad things that happen when kids can't come to school. Uh, I think we're probably at a point where we're going to have to start re reducing numbers uh, in the near future uh, in all schools, unfortunately, because there is no state leadership uh, to get this under control. Uh, I really have a hard time with this because I really hate the fact that our children may bear the burdens of all our, our, uh, of our bad old debate, old behavior. It shouldn't be that way, uh, but we are probably going to have to do something quickly. Um, until then, of course, what can you do? Uh, avoid the herd, wear a mask, keep your distance. Uh, three C's, avoid crowded, confined spaces. Outside's better than and wash your hands. And outside's getting harder, but it's still doable. I mean, and I'm not saying that we should close everything. I think our restaurants can do a good job of doing takeout. They did, a, some of, one of our restaurants in town actually was able to expand during the prior shutdown because they were so good at takeout. Uh, you can go to restaurants. Uh, last night, my wife and I, I felt like an Honest Dave's burger. Uh, I was happy to see when I walked in, one, they've got their posters up. Most of the people in there were wearing a mask. And of course, then we went outside. And when you're outside, it's so much safer. Yeah, it's a little chillier, but just dress warmer. Uh, and so on our nice days, let's go to the restaurants and sit outside and, and, and be close.
closer to normal, but do not be eating, eating inside a restaurant right now. It's just not safe. Uh, last, we'll leave with a quote on leadership. Uh, this is one of my favorite quotes on leadership from Colin Powell. Leadership is about solving problems, not par playing partisan games. Uh, the day soldiers start stop bringing you their problems, the day you have stopped leading them. They've either lost confidence that you can help or concluded you not, do not care. The health experts are trying to talk to our leaders. Please respond. We, we're hoping that you still care. If you do not do this, this is a failure of leadership. You need to solve this problem. Uh, so hopefully this is helpful to you. These are my roles uh, so that you know that I'm not, uh, that you know that I actually have some credentials and work in this field, but a disclaimer, it's not necessarily the opinion of all these people. Uh, this is my opinion, although I have plenty of references so you can back all these opinions up.